Welcome back, operators, once again to the SITREP Podcast Channel, your forward operations base for all things military and historical wargaming. I am your host, Aris Guinea Jim, and in today's episode, we are wrapping up last week's game of Seven Days to the River Rhine by Great Escape Games, where we were recreating part of the Valley of Tears. This battle took place at the opening of the Yom Kippur Arab-Israeli War of October 1973 along the Golan Heights between southern Syria and northern Israel. In this part of the Yom Kippur War, the Syrians threw an absolutely huge attack force at Israeli defenders of the 7th and 188th Brigades, tasked with defending the so-called Purple Line. This was the UN ceasefire line left over from the 1967 Six-Day War. Now we covered all of this background and context in much heavier detail in part one of this video. There's a link to part one in the description of this video. Check it out if you're interested in this material or if you just want to check out the first half of the game and see how we got to this juncture. Also, if I can take just a moment to address the elephant in the room, this content was originally scheduled to be released on the 50th anniversary of the Valley of Tears. That would have been October 6th through 8th of 1973. However, those dates in 2023 landed pretty much directly on the opening of the current war in Gaza, and it just didn't feel comfortable to release Arab-Israeli war-related content right at that time. So we thought that a respectful delay would be in order. At the time of this recording, that 96-hour ceasefire is still holding. Here's hoping for the best and for an improved situation going forward. So in our game, on an 8x6 table played in 15mm, we have Mark and Devin playing the Syrians and Tom playing the Israelis. Now historically, the 77th Tank Battalion, call sign Oz 77 of the 7th Armored Brigade, fought an absolutely legendary defense here. Definitely one of the most epic tank battles ever fought since 1945. The commander of the 77th Tank Battalion, then Lieutenant Colonel Avigor Kahalani, would win Israel's Medal of Valor, that's pretty much Israel's Medal of Honor or Victoria Cross, for his conduct during this battle, earning him a place among Israel's greatest military heroes. In our game, however, the Israelis are having a really tough time. There's nothing wrong with anything that Tom's doing with his tanks or his reinforcements or his Mutsa firing positions. He's just cursed with some of the worst dice I've honestly seen in quite some time. Meanwhile, the Syrian dice are absolutely on fire, especially with their off-board D30-122 howitzer batteries. I mean, even when they call in a fire mission and they miss with these batteries, the barrage drifts and lands on something else and then kills that. It's really kind of incredible. But Tom's been getting reinforcements, some of his lighter units are really picking up the slack and doing some good work, and so far he still holds all five objective points on the table. And spoiler alert, now that we have the makings of one hell of an infantry battle over on the Israeli left, we're going to see some Israeli 120mm mortars really lay the smack down on some Syrian infantry. So let's head over to the footage and see how this thing shakes out. So, like we said at the end of last week's episode, we have a bit of an infantry battle in progress here, where Syrian riflemen have reached the objective point on the extreme left of the Israeli position. The Israeli half-track has suppressed those Syrian riflemen a little bit, and now the Syrian riflemen are going to be taking a shot back at the Israelis. So, first we find the attack value for stationary infantry. At this range, that's going to be 2d10. Looks like Devon has scored one hit. Alright, so it's going to be one hit against those Israeli infantry. Then we're going to go ahead and try and convert that. That's going to be a 1d6, and he needs to get a 5 or a 6 on that because the Israelis are considered in a covered position. And it turns out that he does not get uh, the conversion, so it's going to be one additional white morale token on that Israeli infantry squad. Now, the other Syrian infantry is going to fire an RPG at the half-track, and the rules for that, of course, are going to be very different. Okay, so he's rolled a 7. That's going to be a hit versus the 6-plus hit with the RPG. Now it's an armor penetration of 8. So Devin's making his armor penetration check off-camera, but we pretty much know what's going to happen. RPG versus the front of an M3 half-track at this range. That half-track is pretty much toast. The Syrians attempt to continue this battle by not only deploying a third rifle squad, but also reactivating the two rifle squads that have already shot at the Israelis. In order to do that, Devon has to beat a one for each of those squads. What do you know, the Israelis finally catch a break, and those two Syrian rifle squads will fail to reactivate. 
Apparently their orders were just to reach this fortified position, but long story short, take your first shot guys, you have to take the position as well. Initiative has now passed over to the Israelis, and to counter this infantry threat here, Tom is calling in some mortars off of that half-track mortar carrier you see there. This is a 120mm weapon, and for mortars on our tables, we do have some house rules to make them a little bit more powerful, especially big ones like this 120 here. So with some uncharacteristically good die rolling, Tom has inflicted three with his mortars between the hits and the conversions, and then two more morale tokens were inflicted by small arms fire from that that Israeli team you see there down in the corner of your screen. Now in this scenario we are somewhat nerfing the Syrian infantry down to a morale of four and with five morale tokens inflicted that's going to eliminate one entire Syrian rifle team. You almost never see that in seven days to the river run because of the way they handle infantry damage. You're not knocking down individual figures you have to destroy the combat effectiveness of the entire unit. The Syrians are back on the initiative again, and they are cooking off with a series of Sagar missiles. Okay, that's a 10 on penetration. The Sagar has hit, and the Sagar is going to kill that Centurion shot there you see in that fortified fighting position. Bad news for the Israelis. Here come more Sagars. That's going to be another hit, and now the roll to penetration. Okay, that is the second 10 in a row on D10s. Devin has rolled on back-to-back -back Sagar hits. Yeah, what can I say? We're talking about some seriously hot dice here for the Syrians. This has been the story pretty much the entire game. Now, Tom has been getting some reinforcement tanks, but the Egyptians, with their tanks and their saggers, are killing them as fast as they arrive. The Syrians follow up with some of their artillery. That's going to be off-board D30 122mm howitzer batteries which, again, we sort of handle with some house rules, a little bit more historical, a little bit more technical. Um, it just works better for our historical scenarios like this. All right, so it is going to scatter by three inches at seven o'clock. We measure and find the new impact point, and it looks like it's gonna land right on that Israeli infantry team. Yeah, right there. Okay, so they're obviously gonna impact. It affects everything within six inches with an automatic morale token just for being under artillery fire. He almost clips his own Syrian rifle team there. He's also going to miss that second Israeli team you see there at the bottom of your screen. However, they will impact those guys right there. All right, so far this game looks like an Israeli route. Looks like the Syrians are absolutely running away with the game. Honestly, the Syrians, as you can see here, have also taken some pretty steep losses. They've lost over half their force by this point. Their infantry, in particular, is getting the hell kicked out of them. Israeli reinforcements are coming on the table, and so far the Syrians have taken none of the actual objective points. So this game isn't quite over yet. This little knoll here on the northern end of the battlefield, the Israeli left, is really turning into a hell of a meat grinder. The Syrians have now lost a second complete infantry squad there between mortars, small arms fire, and a lucky roll off of that 50 cal on the M3 half track you see there. So, yeah, there were four complete Syrian infantry teams here. It looks like only two remain. And as far as the fifth Syrian infantry team goes, yeah, they never made it out of that burning BTR-60 in that open field there. So, long story short, take your second shot. Syrians have taken 60% infantry losses. Wrapping up turn four and heading over here to the southern end of the battlefield, we have the Syrian tanks. Yes, uh, I do apologize. They are in 1991 Iraqi Gulf War markings, but it's what we're using on today's table. But uh, yeah, Mark's pushing forward with a lot of his armor using the rapid move rule to cover a lot of this open ground and make a rush on these largely vacated Israeli defensive positions. Tom has been reinforcing his center and his left at the expense of his right. It's been pretty good so far uh, for a play for time, but I think the clock is about to run out on that tactic. Back here to the north, we have some Israeli infantry of 75th Mechanized Battalion, 7th Armored Brigade, firing a bazooka. Yes, you heard that right, a World War II bazooka to engage some light Syrian armor that is trying to occupy the objective point up here on this high ground. They scored a hit, they have now penetrated the armor, and that is one less BTR-60 in the Syrian army.
beginning turn five and just to pause for a moment and take stock of the overall situation the Israelis really are in a tough spot especially in regards to their tanks they are giving limited reinforcements but these two centurions that you see here these are the last Israeli tanks that are going to be coming on the table in today's game so the way we've been working it it's a bit of a scenario rule is whenever the Israelis lose one of their centurion shots uh, they get to roll a d10 on a six up a replacement centurion will arrive at the beginning of next turn up to a total of 10 well we're looking at tanks 9 and 10 here fortunately tank number nine just landed a hit on that distant T62. Tom then rolls a 10 for penetration and yeah that's gonna be one more T62 out of gas. Okay that half-track mortar carrier is rapidly becoming the MVP for the Israeli team. As you can see they are still whipping that ass against yet more Syrian infantry. By the way, here are some of our house rules for how we're handling mortars in our 7 Days to the River Rhine games. They're still pretty much useless against tanks, as they should be. However, we wanted them to be just a little bit more useful against infantry, especially when you roll the way that Tom has. I swear, that mortar carrier has been the only unit that's been performing well for Tom uh, in regarding dice rolls here in this game. So now, Tom is going to try to activate that half-track. By the way, those two morale markers markers they belong to the infantry team further up the slope they just won't stay there okay so no roll is required to activate we're gonna go ahead and roll the 2d10 for the 50 cal that's considered a gun under seven unfortunately he misses both of those so there's gonna be no additional effect there all right further on in Tom's turn he's gonna go ahead and you know what he's gonna activate that half track again he just needs to roll a little bit better this time Okay, so now he has to beat a 1 on a d6 to reactivate it. He does that. Now he's going to go ahead and get another 2d10 on his AT under 7 roll. And this time he rolls a lot better. Boom, there's two hits right there. So we don't even have to worry about converting for additional hits. That Syrian team is now up to 6 total hits. So yeah, they're definitely eliminated. And the Syrians are down to just 20% of their original infantry force. Down here on the southern end of the table, Mark is moving forward with some more of his armor. Looks like both T-55s and T-62s. He is placing the red poker checks beneath the tanks to indicate his activations. And two of those tanks are now going to open fire with HE frag at some Israeli infantry occupying the southernmost objective point. Alright, so both of the tanks have landed hits. So let's start to look at the damage. Alright, clearly those are guns with an AT value above a 7, so they each get uh, 2d10 for damage, it's going to be a total of 4d10, and Mark's dice, man, good grief, look at that, hot dice, he has definitely scored uh, 4 hits on that. Okay, now there's been two actual hits that have done four morale levels worth of damage. So for each hit, he gets to roll 2d6 to convert for additional hits. Note that even though he gets 2d6, if he scores more than one success on those, he doesn't get the additional hits. He basically gets two chances to score a hit. So, long story short, take your third shot. The most he can get here is six damage. And looking at his dice, that's exactly what happened. Six total morale levels inflicted instantaneously that's the end of that Israeli infantry team back up here on the northern end of the table this battle is still going on on what I'm starting to call hamburger hill pork chop hill take your butcher meat of choice it's happening here that last Syrian team is finally over the wall they're gonna fire an RPG down at that Israeli half track the Israelis are going to try and fail to react and interrupt the Syrian action okay so now the Syrians are finally gonna go ahead and fire off their RPG they do score a hit okay so yeah hitting is the hard part with an RPG once you manage to score a hit penetration especially on a little uh, half track like that is pretty much a foregone conclusion and that's going to wrap up the activation. Devin is now moving forward with a BTR-60. And he's going to catch some reaction fire from this little jeep down here. Now, the way we run 7 Days, we do give some very, very small anti-tank values for things like 50 cals, 14.5 millimeters on those BTRs, and even 30 cals. Nothing that will even get the attention of anything even close to a main battle tank, of course. But for light vehicles shooting at each other, we wanted to bring in these new rules to enable that capability.
Down here in the south, the Syrians have placed another Israeli objective point into contest. Mark has rolled straight up the face of that slope with the T-55 and occupied the Israeli firing position. The Israelis are not going to put up with that for very long, so there will be some reaction fire from one of the last Israeli Centurions. You'll be able to barely see him at the top left of your screen there. Okay, so Centurions normally hit on a 5-up in this game. We're giving these guys a 4-up because they're elite tankers of Kahalani's 77th Tank Battalion. Plus one difficulty, however, because the Centurion had to move. Plus two difficulty on top of that, because that T-55 now enjoys the same ballistic fire protection since he's now in the former Israeli firing position. So a net chance to hit of seven, Tom has missed. Even if that T-55 had been hit, notice the objective point is still in play. None of the objective points are actually in the firing positions, so people aren't tempted to cheese wrecked tanks as defensive terrain. The battle here on this bloody northern ridge finally reaches its smoking, bullet-riddled conclusion with still more BTR-60s now crossing over the wall, pretty much running over wrecked Israeli tanks, and they're trying to put down that last surviving Israeli infantry squad, but they miss twice! Okay, so even though they're the last squad standing, and even though they're maximum stacked, those Israelis are still standing tall. All right, so Devin's going to reactivate that BTR-60. He makes the reactivation check on the D6, and with two D10s on his fire check, all right, that hit is going to be sufficient to finally put these heroes out of their misery. All right, so taking a quick check, looking here at the immediate area, yeah, we have active Syrian combat units on the objective, no Israelis nearby to contest it at long, long last this northern objective point has fallen. Holy crap, how many turns did that take? Alright, so that northern objective has finally fallen, as we've discussed, with that BTR-60 right there, and then switching down here to the southern side of the battlefield. Yep, this one is technically in contest, although M3 Havtrek versus T-55 main battle tank, who's walking away from that get-together? And actually this one is also vacated however there is an active centurion sort of protecting it there from the west now into turn six one of the last israeli centurions right there is trading shots with this t-55 right there and so far tom has scored a hit but failed to penetrate Meanwhile, the Syrians have hit and easily penetrated the Centurion. It's just coming down to dice at this point. Tom rolled a 4 plus 9 equals 13, failed to penetrate. Meanwhile, with an inferior gun, the Syrians rolled a 10 plus 8 equals 18. That went straight through the Centurion armor. With that Centurion burning, the Syrians are calling in some of their offboard D30 122mm howitzers behind the burning tank. Clearly, Devon is trying to affect those two remaining Israeli infantry squads. So, first, he has to roll for his barrage's accuracy. Devon nails that. He's going to affect both of those infantry teams. So, per our house rules there, the first thing that's going to happen is everything within the blast radius takes one automatic morale token just for being under artillery fire. Then, he has to roll for additional artillery effects and Devon actually fails both of those rolls. So neither of those Israeli infantry teams, including these guys who are barely hanging on, are going to suffer any additional effects. For now, they're standing tall. Alright, we are now down to the very last Israeli Centurion who is engaged with his T-55 here in an ongoing long-range gunnery duel. The reason Tom really wants to knock out that T-55 is if he's able to do so, then the Israeli M3 half-track that's right next to the T-55 counts as occupying that objective point. Basically, Tom will have retaken the objective point. However, that T-55 now gets the benefit of the Israeli firing position, so it's some tough shooting. Meanwhile, in the center of the field, another Syrian T-55 has now crossed into another position and has pretty much taken this objective point here in the center of the field. Because, yeah, you'll see that the T-55 is closer to the yellow objective marker than that uh, M3 half-track was, and there's honestly not a whole lot else left here that can contest that T-55's position. Right, meanwhile, these guys are exchanging some heavy machine gun fire and some RPGs way up here to the very north. That BTR is trying to shoot up that jeep. 
Alright, so he's got a 5 up to hit that jeep. We're going to see if he can go ahead and do it. If he does, his weapon is only a 2. Again, we give heavy machine guns a bit of a anti-tank value. Very, very low. Nothing that's ever going to bother a tank. But it just might put a hole in a light vehicle, like, say, a jeep. Alright, so the jeep was hit, but uh, he rolled pretty poorly on his penetration. Somehow that jeep has survived. Oh, wait a minute, I stand corrected. Looks like Tom is going to contest that new T-55 after all. So this M3 half-track has rolled up, dismounted his infantry, and that infantry is carrying a bazooka, a World War II bazooka. He has scored a hit against the flank armor of that T-55. The bazooka has a penetration value of 5, so Tom's going to roll a D-10, add 5 to the result. He's got to beat the flank armor, which is 12. Okay, he only gets a 4, which becomes a 9. That T-55 is still there. Here we are at the beginning of turn 7, and this is where we are going to go ahead and call the game as a Syrian victory. Just to summarize some of the last activations here, that T-62 mounted the ridge, took a shot, and finally took out this Israeli 120mm mortar carrier that had done so much damage to Syrian infantry up here on this northern ridge. Meanwhile, this T-55 is still engaged with the surviving Israeli infantry squad in the center, so this objective point is still kind of in contest. This one here to the north is firmly in Syrian hands. This one down here to the south is also firmly in Syrian hands, because that T-55 finally took out that half-track, and even if he didn't, yeah, there's another T-55 right behind him. This objective point here is legally unoccupied by either side, although the Israelis could run this little command jeep up the hill and just keep it covered. That uh, Centurion down there, he is immobilized, but he could still keep him covered by gunfire. The one that really turns it, though, is this one here in the center, because there's nothing the Israelis can counter with there, and that T-62 could just run up and take it pretty much at will. So I don't want to say that this game just came down to the dice. That isn't really fair to the winning players. Mark and Devin definitely set up a good plan and executed it tactically to carry off a win here on the table. But at the same time, dice definitely did play a huge factor, especially on turn one, where we saw Tom lose four out of his five initial Centurions in the opening shots of the game. And from there on out, it was just an uphill battle against mounting Syrian pressure. So we wound up with a bit of a historical upset here, at least in 7th Brigade sector, but at the same time, we could also imagine this kind of thing happening in the 188th Brigade sector further south in the Golan. This kind of thing did happen. The Syrians did score some local breakthroughs toward the Jordan River. At one point, they were just minutes away from key crossings over the Jordan River, and they could have made some breakthroughs into Galilee. But that's going to wrap up our game here on the Golan Heights. Hope you guys liked the game. Okay, folks, there you have it. Despite a bit of an Israeli rally there at the end, this game does shake out as a pretty solid Syrian victory. Proof that you can set up a war game as historically accurate as you want. However, depending on how your players maneuver their units, lay down their fires, and especially how the dice shake out, your game can wind up with a wildly different result on the table. Again, I don't think Tom did anything wrong with any of his units or his maneuvers or anything like that. He just really couldn't buy a break. And it wasn't just him rolling poorly, it was also the Syrians rolling very well. Not to take anything away from Mark or Devin, however, they set up a pretty solid single envelopment over there on their right. Actually, it turned more into a right echelon attack uh, by the end there. But yeah, they put a lot of firepower on the northern end of the table, smashed the Israeli left, and at the same time kept up the pressure in the south, that's over on Mark's side of the table, and pretty much folded up the position uh, quite neatly. But that's where we're going to leave it for now, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Please remember to hit that notification bell. Also, please consider joining the SITREP Podcast Discord. There is an auto-accept invitation link to our Discord in the description of this video. Join our community, see what everyone's up to, and best of all, show us what's going on on your hobby table. But for now, this is Ariskin and Jim with the SITREP Podcast. We are rounds complete for another episode, and as always... Tango Mike for watching.